Many of us have heard the expression, whether it's credited to Oscar Wilde or Will Rogers, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. This is Gina. And Gina isn't a model, but she so graciously said yes to helping me on a project to talk about the impact of style through personal branding. Now, consider for a moment, if someone saw a picture of you today and what you're wearing now and never got a chance to meet you, what would they think? What would they say? <laughs> Hopefully not that. Right? But would they say you're approachable, smart and sophisticated, determined, Fashion is a form of communication, and style is a language. Ralph Lauren said, it's easier to follow fashion than it is to have personal style. And well, that's honestly because style is all about confidence, about showing up as who you are, not about changing what you're wearing on the outside, but using clothes as an extension or an expression of who you are. I'd like to challenge how you get dressed. Really looking at, at, looking at it as a style editor and telling a story. My name is Kendra Porter, and I'm a wardrobe stylist and image consultant. So what do I do? I use clothes to tell a story. Now, people believe I inhale fashion, exhale style. I swear, I breathe the same air like everyone else. <laughs> but I'm not a fashionista, to be honest. For a fashionista, it's all about the love of the fashion, the designers, the trends. Now, granted, when I'm at Fashion Week, at Pablo Garang or Oscar de la Renta, I'm in awe of the fashion, but also in order of the work, the craftsmanship, and the beauty of it all. So yes, I get dressed I get dressed. I do get dressed. <laughs> so yes, I get paid to dress people for a living. And no, you don't have to be a celebrity. I can shop for you just as easily at TJ Maxx as I can at Neiman Marcus. The question is, what is the story that you're trying to tell? What are you trying to communicate to others and to yourself? So have you ever really thought about how you want to be seen, or even how you want to feel when getting dressed. Inevitably, I have this conversation with many people. And someone says, but it doesn't matter. People already know me. Why does it make a difference what I wear? But what about those who don't know you? If you're a professional, and you're looking to take that next level in your career, are you dressed in alignment with the industry that you're in, or the culture? Better yet, are you aligned with the company and your personal brand and how they want to be seen? How people perceive you has an impact on how they interact with you, and you also have an influence on yourself. So think about it for a moment. That one outfit that when you put on, you feel absolutely amazing in. You might feel powerful, sexy. That feeling right there is the power of dressing with intention. Now, think about the outfit that you put on during COVID, working from home, <laughs> right? The one that you wore every day before it was laundry day. Feels very different, right? Style is about being intentional, about showing up, about what you want to communicate and how you want to feel. I have a client who's in her 60s. She's got gorgeous sparkling eyes, white hair. She said to me, my mother used to tell me, I'm the only one that's going to tell you you're beautiful because I'm your mother. And in that moment, I said, this is why I do this. Because like so many others before her, she was holding on to a story that she had been told time and time again as a kid. Look, I told you before, not a fashionista. 
I honestly was the biggest tomboy as a kid. I didn't flip through the cover of Vogue magazine. Rather, I wanted to be a truck driver. Watched way too much Smokey and the Bandit as a kid. <laughs> my mother wanted me to be a lady, and at the age of 12, she put me in my first girdle. There was a deep impact from that. Inside, I knew that I was beautiful, but eh, was I really? Now, to be fair, my mother never called me ugly, never called me fat, but her actions made me question not only my beauty, but who I needed to become, what did I needed to look like in order to be considered valuable. I started styling because I wanted women to love the skin they're in. What I quickly learned, this wasn't only for women, nor was it even about size. No matter your shape, no matter your height, no matter your gender, learn to love yourself. And I mean all parts of you. Right? You can have goals, lose weight, gain weight, build muscle. Love yourself now, in the moment, today. You can love yourself through that process, but learn to love who you are now. So this is the Body Heart Campaign that was created by Amber Chris. She created it so it would embrace women loving their whole body and showcase that. And it's what I wanted other women to also do and be and learn. I also want them to learn how to narrate their own story. And in order to do that, you need to be deliberate. Deliberately showing up as your best self and doing it with intention. So, how do you do that, you ask? Great question. Think of three words, three personal characteristics, actually, that you want to be known for. Right? Not about fashion, but actual personality traits. Trustworthy, approachable, funny. Now, think of two fashion words based on style for how you want to be seen. Classic, modern, sporty. Every day, use those five words as a litmus test. Check in with yourself. Are you dressing the way that you want to show up, the way that you want to be seen, and the way that you want to be perceived? Fashion is all about being deliberate. Here are a couple examples of what that looks like. Red can be powerful, it can be seductive, it can be playful. Tell them how you style it. Use color to evoke emotion. Black can be moody. It can be intelligent and sophisticated and sleek. So why do I tell you all of this? Why is this important? Because after doing this for over a decade, I've worked with thousands of men and women across the country. And here's what I've learned. When you stand in clothes that resonate with who you are or who you're even growing to be, you stand taller. I see grimaces on, grimaces on faces, turn to smirks, then turn to smiles. Some even dance in the mirror. One of my favorite memories is a client of mine who lost 100 pounds, and she and her partner were traveling away on vacation. She wanted to feel sexy. Her story was one of triumph. And so I found her a sheer little black bathing suit with an inset bikini, and I could hear this commotion on the inside of the dressing room. I said, everything good? She said, yeah, just dancing in the mirror. <laughs> I said, OK. Now, truth be told, it's generally the women that dance in the mirror, the men just stand there posing like they're on the cover of GQ. <laughs> <laughs> look good, feel good, feel good, look good. It's like asking the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Honestly, I don't care which. I just need you to get to the good. Be intentional. In the way that I work with my clients and in talking to other people and seeing how they've changed, it is the perception of yourself in the mirror and being able to change that perception. You get to do that every day. And so my challenge to you is to step up, look in the mirror, define who you are, 
Choose who you want to be, how you want to be seen, and how you want to feel. And do it with confidence. After that, get dressed and go out for the day ahead. So Versace said, don't be into trends. Don't make fashion own you. But you decide what you are, what you want to express by the way you dress and the way you live. Remember Gina? This was our story of style transformation. Be purposeful, play with fashion, and explore style to tell your story. The last thing that I want to leave you with is that I believe that we are all wonderfully, fearfully crafted by God and to love yourself. And nothing else, honor your style, honor you. Thank you.